Right, this week we're going to dive into some editing. We're going to look at Adobe Photoshop. We're going to look at all the new stuff in the new update. And let me tell you, if you've not been in the Photoshop beta, this stuff is going to blow your mind because a bunch of stuff has come over from that. It's now in the main version of Photoshop. It's very easy to get the update. You just need to go into your Creative Cloud app and actually just update Photoshop. Done. Then dive in. Let's look at what's new. Let's look at what's exciting because it is very exciting. Some of this we've covered in other videos in the beta, but now it's in the main version. And you know what that means? It's your door Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday with each and every week. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday with each and every week. And every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new. I've forgotten how to do it. I remember. A brand new. What are we doing? Fresh photography tutorial. I'm in a really good mood today. Let's dive into Photoshop. Let's look at what's new. Now, there are kind of four main things we're going to talk about. Two big things that are very exciting and two things which are still exciting. They're just not quite as big. Let's go ahead and open a photo. Let's start with this photo. Now, this was taken on the new Fujifilm GFX 100. Two. And the first thing I want to show you is there is a better, improved contextual taskbar. Now that is this that floats around. I've got it down at the bottom here, but you can really put it wherever you like. And based on how you're editing the photo, these little buttons are going to change a little bit. So for example, right now I've got select subject, I've got remove background, I could add a new adjustment layer. That's a really easy way to kind of get started with your edit. But let's say I actually go up and I click the lasso tool and I just start selecting something. Let's make a random selection like that. I now have a new contextual taskbar, which allows me to do things based on the fact that I've just made it a selection. I deselect that and it goes back to how it was before. Really, really easy, which I really like. It's very handy. Now, if this isn't showing up for you, super easy fix. Just come up here to window, come down, make sure contextual taskbar here is ticked on. So that's a nice improvement. We already have the contextual taskbar in Photoshop, but it has been improved. It does seem to work better now. It's just it's just very kind of natural the way it works. I really like it. You can turn it off though if you don't like it as well. Now the remove tool has had some improvement made to it, which is pretty impressive by itself, just purely because it was already very nice to use. It was already very impressive the way it worked. So let's go ahead and use it on this photo, the new improved remove tool. This is a photo obviously of an owl. I don't know what kind of owl because I'm not very good with birds, but it's an owl, that's for sure. But we're going to remove this branch in front of it because I think that it you know, in a perfect world, it wouldn't have been there. I couldn't move the owl. I couldn't obviously climb the tree, but we're going to remove it with the remove tool. So no problem at all. Now there's two ways we can do this. We can either start using the remove tool. So I'll do it on this bit here. We left click and hold and we paint this on to where we want this to be. When we release, the remove tool does its thing. That's actually not how I'm going to use it on this particular example. I'm going to come up here to this tick box, remove after each stroke, and I'm going to untick that because we're going to paint this on and then once we're happy with where we've painted it on, we press this tick up here, click on that, and it'll do the job. So let's start actually painting this on. I'm gonna use a reasonably small brush. You can actually change the size of your brush by holding Alt on the keyboard, right click and hold, and then drag right or left to increase or decrease the size of the brush. Very easy. Let's just paint this on over this bit of the branch here. Okay, then we're gonna come down to this next bit of branch which I'm then going to just paint on like so. And you can see because of the way I'm doing this, I can I can release my left click and paint somewhere else and it's still going to work perfectly. I'm pretty happy with that selection. Let's go ahead and press the tick up here and let the remove tool do its job. And look at that. Gone. That's something I would never have even tried with the spot healing brush. And that is that has worked so well. It's really impressive how well it works. And now it almost looks like the branch has gone behind the owl. That's a pretty quick example as well. Probably, to be honest, if I was trying to make this really, you know, proper, I would have taken a little bit more time over my selection. But that's really, really impressive and incredibly handy for this kind of editing where you just need to fix these things. But it's a bit more complex than the spot healing brush isn't going to do the job. So to be honest with you, I'm a huge fan of the improvements made to that. Now let's go back to this watch photo. And I don't like this plant. It's a little bit too close to the watch here. So we're going to try and take that out. And that's where we're going to use the new generative fill. Now let's select the lasso tool here. Let's just zoom in a little bit and we're going to make a selection around 
the shadow and around the actual plant itself. So let's do that. I'm not going to be too crazy exact. Let's go. Let's go down to the to the end of the sort of wooden board here. Just make sure we get all these shadow bits in. Okay, great. That looks really good, right? And you can see the new contextual taskbar has come up here with generative fill right here. Now, if you haven't seen what generative fill is already, we've got a full video actually testing it out when it was added to the Photoshop beta, but it's in the main Photoshop app now. This is unbelievably incredible stuff. This is Photoshop's new AI software that is able to now change a selection in your photo. So it can actually add things into your photo. It can change an area, which is what we're going to get it to do here. We can use it in all kinds of different ways. This is one example. So let's go ahead and click generative fill here. And then it's going to ask me, what would you like to generate? What would you like to add into the photo? What would you like to put in this part of the photo that you selected? I'm going to leave it blank. You can see it says optional. And I'm just going to click generate. Now we could add in whatever we want, but if we just click generate, then Photoshop, the AI is going to work out, okay, probably just wants to get rid of this plant and, and this shadow. And hopefully it'll fill it in with just the wooden board. So there you go. Look at that. That is crazy how good it looks. One, it's very quick. How easy was that? And the best part about generative fill is we get three options. So if I zoom out a little bit, look at that. You'd never even have known, right? So now the plant is just up here. Now we get three options for how we want this to look. So it's generated three different options in that area. So this is the first one, which I think looks perfect. The second one here, also great. The third one here, also really nice. But look at the, don't just look at the plant, look at the shadow here, right? The first one, look at how it's generated that. Second one, and then third one. This is so good. And this is an unbelievable tool. Now you could of course then add things to the photo if you wanted to. So let's just, as an example, let's make a selection down in this bottom right hand corner. Let's make selection a little bit like that. Let's go generative fill and let's type in plant in the corner. Now, if we click generate now, what's gonna happen is Photoshop's gonna work out probably what we mean by plant in the corner based on the context of the rest of the photo and it's going to add that in so you can see it's doing that now let's see what three options it gives us so the first one i don't love it so much but the second one that does look a lot better and we've got this kind of extra little bit down here kind of kind of does fit in with the photo actually let's look at the third one that is also very impressive but what's very impressive about the third one in particular is look at the depth of field of this plant i think the second one probably works best for me but this is an extremely powerful Kind of addition to photoshop this is something that is going to make a huge difference to the way you can edit your photo whether it is removing something like we did earlier on adding something in like that you know sometimes it's not going to work perfectly every time but it's certainly it's certainly a very very useful thing and actually there's another way we can use it so this is generative fill but we can also look at generative expand. So let's open another photo so we can actually take a look at that now. So let's look at this photo here. This is you know, going to be reasonably challenging because it's actually got a person in it. But what we're going to do is actually expand this photo out. So we're going to come up to the crop tool. Let's bring this out to the right. So we sort of center her up here and let's bring this down to the bottom. Now, there's been ways to kind of work with this in the past and you could use the clone stamp tool and stuff like that to try and expand the size of your image. But now we can just expand the photo like this and the taskbar here now has generative expand. So let's click that. It's exactly the same as generative fill, but now it's going to fill in the areas that we've cropped out to. I think the reason for that is as they added generative fill, they found this is this is one of the most useful ways to use this. Great. So now it's just even easier. Again, we could type something in. Let's not even bother. Let's just click generate. Photoshop's going to do its thing. It's going to give us three options. And let's see how it does here. And look at that. Option one, basically flawless. That looks, that looks perfect. That looks real. So let's look at the other options though. So we've got option two, very, very similar. Slightly different path, slightly different jacket. Option three, slightly different again. I think I might like option three the best. Option one is nice. I forget what's real and what's not, but this is absolutely crazy. This is incredibly impressive stuff because this is now a very different photo from where we kind of started. This is this is totally, totally crazy. So being able to actually expand your photos out, you know, if you've got a nice landscape photo like this one, but you wanted to make it a much wider photo, let's center, let's center this guy up in the middle here. There we go. So all I have to do, 
just click generate on that contextual taskbar so easy let's see how photoshop handles this so it's given that's really interesting it's given us one option with like a sort of seaside town that's probably a nicer option isn't it yeah probably like that one the best but if you don't like any of those options and this is a really interesting example actually we could hit generate again and maybe this time i'll type in cliffs i'll just type in cliffs let's click generate and see what it kind of comes up with okay that's a bit intense <laughs> but wow look at this this is crazy what it's done okay that's really interesting so if we get rid of the cliffs we can hit generate one more time but what i really like about this as well is it's saving everything that we've done so far so we've got all of the different options of everything we've generated for this part of the photo look at that i really like that that's really nice that's a nice option as well that less so maybe but that's that's a pretty good option i really like that you know if you really wanted to you could then combine this with just generative fill maybe you don't like this bit of cliff so let's go ahead and just make a selection around that generative fill generate let's just see what it does for that see kind of where we get to look at that that's interesting it's kind of like misty sort of hills look at that though this, this is kind of perfect Yep, that's also really good. I like that though. That's a bit more in keeping with the rest of the photo. So this is an extraordinarily powerful thing that is now in the main Photoshop app. This is stuff that is definitely worth playing around with. There are a few things to be aware of. So for example, the generative fill parts are not as high resolution as the rest of your photo. So you want to be a little bit careful about how much you're adding. I mean, you can go crazy. It's, it's super fun to experiment and see kind of where it can take you. And it's a really interesting way to actually I don't know, kind of play around with editing and, and what this AI is capable of doing. There are obviously concerns, I guess, about it because, you know, where is the line now of what is still photography, right? This is now a completely different image to the actual image that I took, which was this one, which is which is just a different feel to it. It's just a very different feel. So definitely worth bearing that in mind, but I think it's something interesting to play around with and so we've got the improved contextual taskbar we've got the improved remove tool and then generative fill and generative expand big stuff for this update to photoshop let me know what you think though what do you think about all of that what are you most excited about what are you most concerned about what are you where are you feeling this how are you how are you how are you feeling about all this stuff let me know down in the comments of course there's a full list of kit that we use for this video for a bunch of these photos all that stuff down in the description as well don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new content all of the time I will see you next time, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.